Today I would like to discuss some approaches used to grow hydroponic cucumbers this past summer. A polypropylene 27 gallon container was used as the growing tank. A hole saw was used to cut three holes in the lid to support the net pots. Then the tank was filled about halfway with water. This was a good time to add fertilizer. A master blend hydroponic fertilizer was used, but other hydroponic fertilizer would also work well. Fertilizer stock solutions were used rather than solid fertilizers. Stock solution A contained one pound per gallon of master blend fertilizer plus a half a pound per gallon of magnesium sulfate. 20 milliliters of this stock solution were added per gallon of water, which would calculate to 500 milliliters for 25 gallons. Stock solution B consisted of one pound per gallon of calcium nitrate. Again, 20 milliliters of this stock solution were added per gallon of water, which would be 500 milliliters for 25 gallons of water. This is what I use to measure my stock solutions. Now things will get a bit tricky because my pH will drift upwards as the crop grows, so I added 10 milliliters of pH down plus a teaspoon of ammonium sulfate, but this is a guess based upon previous crops and will vary for different water sources. Water was added to a level where net pots would be immersed in about one half inch of nutrient solution. Now we're ready to transplant, but we need some seedlings. Cucumber seeds were germinated on a wet paper towel. Germinated seedlings were transplanted into net pots filled with growing medium. Actually, seeds could have been directly seeded into the net pots. After several days, healthy seedlings emerged and were ready to transplant. Transplanting is simple. Just drop the net pot into the hole. Two seedlings were transplanted. A solution level indicator was placed in the middle hole. It consisted of a sliver of extruded polystyrene inside of a PVC pipe. For example, if the nutrient solution level dropped down to about 5 inches, I could easily read this from the indicator. The nutrient solution pushes the indicator upwards due to the buoyancy of the low density polystyrene. The reading slightly underestimates the actual depth because the weight of the indicator reduces the buoyancy. The two cucumber plants look nice and healthy on July 20th. We must be doing something right. Nine days later and the plants are continuing to grow vigorously and there are some blossoms forming. On August 3rd, the plant on the right has become quite tall and I believe there are some fruits forming. Yes, there are cucumber fruits and they should be ready to harvest in a couple of days. You may be interested in the trellising method for these cucumbers. The lower part of a Simpson strong tie T-strap is bent in a right angle in a vise, and the strip is fastened to the wood fence. String is wound around the plant and is supported by the T-strap. At this point, we notice that these cucumber plants are gynecious in that they produce all female flowers, and they are parthenocarpic in that they produce fruit without pollination. By August 7th, some fruits were ready to harvest. On August 8th, we get another nice view of the gynecious parthenocarpic nature of these plants. Up until this time, no additional water or fertilizer has been added, and there hasn't been any appreciable rainfall, and the solution level has dropped to about 5 inches. I made an executive decision to maintain this level for the remainder of the crop. Rather than making a small nutrient solution batch every time an addition was needed, I took pre-made solution from a large batch that supplies my other hydroponic crops. In order to add the solution gently, I decided this would be a good task for a bleach bottle button dripper. This can easily be made by drilling a hole near the bottom of a bleach bottle or other plastic bottle. Then simply insert a button dripper into the hole. So the approach is to add about a gallon of nutrient solution whenever the solution level indicator reads below 5 inches. It usually takes over 6 hours for the bottle to empty. The plants are doing great on August 15th and you may have noticed that a juice jug button dripper is being used to add nutrient solution, but it doesn't sound as impressive as a bleach bottle button dripper. Wouldn't you enjoy picking these fruit? 
Sometimes a fruit grew pretty large before I picked it, but it still tasted pretty good. By September 1, the plants were not as vibrant, but they were still growing and producing well. By September 26, the plants appear to be in decline, but some nice fruit were still being harvested. At this point, I was curious to see if the nutrient solution had changed, so rubber tubing was fitted onto a pipette, which was placed in the solution level PVC pipe. The bulb was squeezed, and solution was extracted and collected. The solution electrical conductivity was 2.71 ms, and I was okay with that. Although the original and refill solutions were around 2 ms, much of this apparent buildup of nutrients was likely calcium and magnesium, which are taken up less aggressively than the other nutrients. If the EC had been 3.5 ms or higher, I would have decreased the EC of the refill solution by about half. If the EC had been below 1.5 ms, then I would have increased the refill solution EC by about a quarter. The pH of the solution appears to be about 6.5, and I'm happy with that. If the pH had been above 7.5, I would have added more ammonium sulfate or pH down solution to the refill solution. If the pH was below 5, then I wouldn't have added any pH down or ammonium sulfate to the refill solution. By October 9th, the plants were pretty beat due to advanced age of the plants and weather conditions. This would be a good time to take a little peek at the roots. Oh, they look pretty good. They're still nice and white. I decided to take another look at the nutrient solution. Well, the EC was 2.51 and the pH was about 6.0. So the solution was in an acceptable range and is not the cause of the deterioration of the plants. On October 13th, the plants were finished for the season. They gave their last bit of energy to produce these two cucumbers. Here's a view of the root system. The roots were white and alive, and I'm thinking that the gentle nature of adding nutrient solution by slow dripping contributed to this. Here's a view of the stem emerging from the net pot. There was minimal rainfall during the crop, so the 27 gallon storage container worked well as a tank. But a trash container with a domed lid would be more suitable for a wet climate. Future plans include automatically adding nutrient solution via a dipstick float valve waterer similar to that used on these zinnias. Well folks, I was pretty satisfied that the approaches for growing this crop of hydroponic cucumbers worked well. And I hope that you will experiment and improve on these approaches.